Hi, I'm Osha Ginsberg. Can you tell us about the peak of your experience with the paparazzi? I was in Bali shooting a finale of The Bachelor. There's one particular day I went diving from our hotel uh, to a place called Padang Bay, which is about two hours away. So you don't accidentally end up where we were at the dive spot. The dive van pulled up and the guy said, oh, we'll get changed here. There was no traffic around on the way in there. But as soon as we arrived, a scooter like vroom, arrived right after us. And it was like right out in the open. You know, bear in mind at the time, I was quite ill. Um, I was suffering a, a, a pretty decent um, episode of mental ill health. And I was on a lot of medication. I was on two different kinds of antipsychotics and SSRI and an amino ketone. And, and these drugs, they you put on a lot of weight. You can do all the exercise you want, but they mess with your insulin response. So I, I was putting on about a kilo a week. I was pretty big. And I don't care if you're Mick, like even Mick Fanning and Steph Gilmore do not look good when they're getting into a wetsuit. All right. It's just like, I don't care who you are. Like you don't, no one looks good getting into a wetsuit. I'm in a, a full length wetsuit. So I've got it open down to my waist, right? And then him and the guy with the boat, they just vanished for about 20 minutes. I'm like, this doesn't feel right. Anyway, I got back to Australia and I don't want to dignify the guy by saying his name on your show, but he's a high profile pap and he's filming me. He's coming at me going, oh yeah, Osha, we got you, mate. We got you good. Did you have a good time in Bali? Did you have a good time diving in Padang Bay? We got you, mate. We got you real good. And, and the glint in his eye, it was the same glint that the high school bullies who would kind of, you know, pinch and nipple cripple me in the in the change rooms after PE. It's the same kind of bloodlusty kind of ha 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 kind of like, you know, spike in the side, kicking when you're down kind of vo thing in his voice. Couple of days go by, sure enough, there's the photos. Osha shows off his barley belly and it's me squishing myself into this wetsuit and on a really long lens. And it was really clear that I'd been set up. And I was just, I was so ashamed. Cause I'd never, to that point, I'd never taken my shirt off in public. Never, never. I'd always been so, so horrified of my body from when I was in Weight Watchers as a little kid to, you know, all growing up. I was so ashamed of myself, so ashamed of how fat I was, so ashamed of my, you know, I was all body dysmorphic and weird and it was horrible. It was absolutely horrible. It was just awful to be so publicly shamed like this. I was like, you know what? Stuff this. I took the publication to the Australian Press Council and the Australian Press Council um, found in my favour. They found in my favour that the, this particular publication had breached a number of their guidelines. One of them which was a reasonable expectation of privacy and one of them was to not cause harm. When you win at the, the press council, what do you win? Oh, it's a trophy. It's really exciting. Um, <laughs> I've got it at home. No, nothing. Nothing. But now, if you look at the article, it says this was in breach. This article has been found in breach. From what I know, I'm the first person to have taken at least that particular publication. I'm the first person to have taken this sort of thing to the press council. And I'm the first person that they found in favour of. What? There has been hundreds, thousands of women that have had this happen to them. But I'm the first person they found in favour of um, as a man. Why would that be? I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know. There's an element of dehumanising. There's an element of, no, you signed up for a career in the public eye, therefore you are absolutely fair game. And that's it. Um, and uh, look, honestly, I, look, un until we stop clicking on those photos, those photos will still get taken. There was a famous case of um, one particular paparazzi who put listening devices in Nicole Kidman's pot plants to know when she left the house. You know, that's just, that's not okay. But it's, that's, part of it is the gig. Yeah. Part of it is just creepy. <laughs> Unfortunately, once it gets creepy, that's where people start paying a lot of money for the photos.